take one to the house too. <laughs> Regan Smith got the free pass on this caution for rain. We are good to go. The Ford Mustang safety car heads for home. Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson will lead them down for this restart with 354 laps to go. Whoa, that was a bit of an unusual restart. I think the 16 started to go, woed up a little bit, and I really messed up Montoya, but uh, <laughs> the 16 benefited from it. Some short tracks, they call that a Texas restart by the leader, Darrell. I don't I know, know why. No, A.J. Foyt. I, yeah. I used to think about A.J. He liked, he didn't like those Texas restarts. May have come from him. I think that means it's a jackrabbit, you know? Oh, that could be. Mark Martin making some noise on the outside as he tries to overtake Kurt Busch for fourth place in that green number five. Well, they have helped that car a bunch. Every pit stop, they have made it better and better and better. He gets a run on the high side. He'll take fourth away from Kurt Busch in that two car. Mark's car was just really tail happy, uh, jumping out from him off corner earlier in the race, but it looks hooked up now. Montoya having a strong race in the early going it would surprise no one for him to go to victory lane here despite his lack of short track experience car's been good all weekend yeah he but he's run good almost ever since he ran his first race here a couple of years ago Jamie Mack behind Menard let's go to his pit Dick Bergeron well, the Daytona 500 winner is not feeling well at all Mike fumes are getting into the race car making McMurray nauseous it can come from so one thing that happens here the car will bottom out and you can knock a hole in your tailpipes and your headers get fumes in them from the engine you can knock a one of the crush panels out of one of the wheel wheels get fumes in from the outside of the car and even the brakes here can cause you uh, to have a little bit of a headache I'm told he's been uh, he's been stuffed up fighting the flu and what's the first thing that'll affect your equilibrium and if you don't need it here you don't need it anywhere Paul Menard on the outside of McMurray, and that's eighth and ninth place. Daryl, it's funny you mentioned the brakes because I was in their garage area, their pit area this morning, and they were completely changing everything about the brakes on that car. Kevin Mannion, the crew chief, said they had fought the brakes ever since they unloaded on Friday. Well, we used to come here with pretty minimum brakes because you don't use a lot of brake here. But uh, these cars, uh, the, this time, this, these cars now, you just use a ton of brakes setting the front end. Matt Kenseth on the high side in the 17, Truex underneath, and here comes Ambrose. Ambrose in the 47, fighting back from a pit road speeding penalty earlier. Yeah, he's fighting his way back to the top 10 after qualifying ninth. In fact, he moves into the 12th spot. But yeah, he was like 30th, not that many laps ago with that 47 car. Well, Marcos was one of our best cars, remember, in uh, practice, high on the practice sheet and uh, good on long runs. Greg Biffle has company for the lead. Jimmy Johnson trying the bottom where uh, Kurt Busch had a lot of success early in the race. Well, he sees where Greg Biffle's running. If he's going to pass him, it's going to have to be on the bottom right now. Kind of old school would tell you that you're on a short track, you should run the bottom if you want to be fast. And I think some guys kind of try to make the top work, but if I'm going to drive this race, I'm going to run the bottom. And that's why, Daryl, when they resurfaced this track, they put a progressive banking in it. So the upper grooves are steeper and you had more of a choice of where to run instead of having to be a bottom feeder all day. Single foul. <laughs> Not anymore. Sixth place Gordon and Keslowski. And I'm going to tell you we still are a little ways away from halfway but the call of the race right now goes to Jay Guy the crew chief for that 12 car when he left him out back on lap 40 on that first caution and ran 116 laps before they made their first pit stop. They got that track position and now they're keeping it and Jay Guy you might say who is Jay Guy where'd he come from. Well he was the crew chief on the 78 car last year but Brad said he and Jay when they go test or when they do some nationwide races or some of the truck races they kept running into each other and exchanging ideas and they really started to connect and say you know we should try to work together. Brad actually chose him to be his crew chief. But it's amazing you know Brad ran this 12 car four or five races last year struggled their guts out struggled when this year started had a great run going in Atlanta before the wreck there late in the race backing it up here at Bristol. 
Brad started off pretty much that way last year in the Nationwide Series, if you recall. Got in a number of wrecks, had a number of problems, took him about five or six races before he got his legs under him. I think he's going to be okay. Jamie McMurray joins this battle. Darrell, I guess there's nothing to make you feel better than going toward the front. You got to, you got to, if your car's running good and you're competitive like he is right now, you won't, you won't think about how bad you feel. A good handling race car, good running race cars like medicine. Tell you what, Jamie McMurray may be feeling sick, but he continues to move forward with this one car as he just got him another car as he's battling Jeff Gordon at 24. This is a battle for seventh. And look at Truex in the uh, 56 car. Boy, right there, Jamie would love to be able to just go up just a little bit. He's going to be able to this time. Pick up so much speed when you come off the corner and let the car go all the way out to the wall. It really bogs you down when you got to stay down low underneath somebody. What an awesome shot there out the front of Truex's car. You know, we're going to see a lot of Marcus Ambrose today. Anybody who can get from the back of the pack with a penalty back up into the top 10 that quickly is going to be a car to watch. Just think about his two races here last year. He finished 10th a year ago. Most of the race was on seven cylinders as Montoya in the 42 car just takes second place away from Jimmy Johnson. And now Johnson falling into the clutches of his teammate, Mark Martin. It just it looks like the, that the 48 car once again is only good on the short, fresh tire run. Krista, how about the 42? Well, you mentioned how good Montoya is here with limited short track experience. He told me this week, and I actually really enjoy racing at Bristol. I found it intimidating at first, but I caught on to it pretty quickly. And that's what he's doing today. He's up to second, Matt. Krista, there we go. Krista, the big concern for Mark Martin wasn't about the fact his race car was tight. They made a track bar just of backing up on that to try to free it up. But it's what the tire issue was for the 20 of Logano and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He asked Alan Gustin, were they chunking or they just wear? And he told him it was a wear issue to try to bring uh, the calmness back down to Mark Martin. Always someone who let's keep an eye on possible tire issues, which apparently doesn't appear there is one right now. You know what happens, Larry? We've documented this before. It seems like it's a team issue. Uh, you know, the, the chat, the front end settings, uh, the, the way the front end works, pretty common car to car t on, on your on every team. And so if one car has an issue wearing the inside of a tire, probably figure the other one will, too. I tell you, we talked about Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Daryl, not being good on the long run. Another one that just seems to be backing up is his teammate, Jeff Gordon, in that 24 car. Jeff has actually lost several positions. Now he's outside the top 10 on this run. Well, I think if we watch his car just a minute here, you'll see why. It just really gets uh, it gets really loose with him when he starts to lead. He's, I think he's pushing loose. He's got a lot of wheel in the car, and then when it comes off the corner, the back end snaps out. We've seen that with a number of cars. Montoya wants the lead from Greg Biffle. Here comes the Colombian on the bottom. They have done a phenomenal job. I think Brian Patty is crew chief and, and Juan. They've worked so well together. They made the chase last year. Um, I'm really impressed with the job this guy. These guys have done and his teammates not doing poorly doing pretty well too. Good job there. Tell you what he just drove by Greg Biffle. Don't like the sound of that. It sounds like everybody is very cautious about that right front tire. It never gets a break at this half mile racetrack. 178 laps complete. And the new leader in the Food City 500 is Juan Paulo Montoya. The gloves are off. You're watching NASCAR on Fox.